Hello, 405. Welcome to Lab 6, Body Composition, Part 1. So for the next two weeks, we're going to be working on our body composition assessments. And this week, the objective is to create a body composition goal and also perform all the following assessments, circumferences, skin folds, bioelectrical impedance in body, the bot pod, and a couple of you will uh, be volunteers to perform the hydrostatic weighing assessment. So the overall goal for body composition assessment, the objective is to track body composition goals and also to determine the effectiveness of an intervention. To assess injury risk, for example, low bone mineral density is linked to increased bone stress fracture risk also to aid in setting body composition goals and to assess health risk. Could be due to being underweight or overweight. Right? So all, all these things are things that we have to keep in mind when we're performing a body composition assessment and just to make sure that we're creating appropriate goals based on our clients, current health and fitness status, and their desired body composition goals. In regards to body composition and health, excess body fat, particularly when located centrally around the abdomen, is associated with many chronic conditions, including hypertension, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, stroke, cardiovascular disease, and dyslipidemia. Body composition assessments can be expressed as the relative percentage of body mass that is fat and fat-free tissue using a two-component model. We'll be able to study that in this lecture. Body composition can be estimated with methods that vary in terms of complexity, cost, and accuracy. And this is going to be something that we'll be able to study specifically for this week, as you're performing all the different assessments, such as skin folds, in body, bot pod, you'll be able to, while performing that assessment, you'll be able to see the differences of the results that you get when you perform each type of um, test. So all of them vary in complexity, thus, um, You'll be able to perform it in a much um, faster, easier manner, right? Or it might be a little bit more complicated, might be more um, difficult, such as kinfo assessments that might be a little bit challenging at first, but then over time when you get practice performing those skin folds, not only are you more confident, proficient about it, but your results are a lot more accurate. Uh, compared to when we're just starting to learn how to perform skin full assessments, right? Also the cost, some of them are more cost efficient than others. So they might be more available to you as a professional to perform compared to other assessments like DEXA scans, right? The DEXA, the equipment itself is very expensive. So not all facilities might have that equipment specifically. Right. Some others might be more cost efficient, like skin folds. You can get a caliper for a very low price. You can perform body composition assessments like so. And they all the different methods that we're going to use today as well, they all vary in accuracy. Right. And so you'll be able to compare your results or body composition, specifically the body fat percentage that you obtain using all the different methods and the fat to fat free mass, all those uh, results you'll be able to compare between tests and determine the accuracy of all those results. So these are the common body composition techniques. You got the anthropometric methods like height and weight. We can use tables like ACSM tables for BMI and waist to hip ratios. We're gonna do circumferences and we're going to do skin fold measurements. We're also going to be performing the in-body 
the biological impedance test, that will be the whole body assessment, like the one in the top right corner picture here. Whole body in body assessment, hydrostatic weighing, a couple of volunteers will uh, be able to get their body composition assessed through this method. We have the air displacement plethysmography, that is the bot pod. That's this one right here. And DETEXA, that's another body composition technique, but that we won't perform for lab, unfortunately. So these are your body composition models. We have the two compartment model and the three compartment model. The two compartment model, that is fat mass to fat free mass. And we'll study this more in depth in a second. These are your skin volts, hydrostatic weighing, um, the bot pod and the in body. And the three compartment model is the DEXA that would be taking into account fat mass, fat free mass, and bone mass. So talking about more the about the compartment models, we know that the following assessment tools, skin folds, hydrostatic weighing, and so forth, those utilize the two compartment model. That means that they are um, categorizing, right? They're determining that body composition um, into fat mass and fat free mass. Fat mass, we know that's all tissues in the body that contain fat, including subcutaneous fat, intramuscular fat, and fat surrounding organs and other tissues. And so we can further categorize this into essential fat and storage fat. Essential fat is necessary to carry out normal physiological functions. Right, so this is um, essential fat, it's crucial for us to continue normal physiological functions. Uh, whereas storage fat, that's fat that is stored subcutaneously and around organs. And it is the storage fat that is most variable. So as you can see in this picture here to the uh, bottom right, we have a DEXA scan comparing two individuals, one individual that has more storage fat, right, more of that visceral fat around the organs compared to this individual that does not have a lot of that storage fat and has more of that essential fat around uh, subcutaneously, right, between the skin and muscle. It's not a lot, we can, can't can quite see as much um, visceral fat, storage fat uh, around organs compared to the individual to the left. So that's our fat mass component. The fat free mass is going to be muscle, bone, organs, connective tissue, and water. So those are all those things that are going to be pretty much chunked into that fat free mass component. Now in regards to body density, this is assumed to be the combination of densities of fat and fat free mass. So usually body, body density is going to range between 1.01 to 1.09 density of fat around 0.9, and density of fat-free mass is going to vary significantly, right? Fat-free mass is all those different components here, muscle, bone, organs, connective tissue, water. So fat-free mass is going to vary, right? Your total body water is going to vary a lot within the day, within day to day, between weeks, um, also muscle, right, um, and bone, so the, uh, the fat-free mass component, uh, density of fat-free mass is going to vary significantly. So for body composition models, this graph, um, this bar graph is comparing different compartment models between the two compartment model and a multi-compartment. The two compartment model that we talked about is that fat mass to fat-free mass. 
So fat mass is going to be around 15 to 25 percent of that total body weight, around 1.5 kilograms of essential fat. Right, so that is generalizing all that fat mass uh, com compartment or com component. That fat mass is going to be around 15 to 25% of your body weight. Compared to fat-free mass, that is going to be around 75 up to 85% of your total body weight, right? So when we're performing the assessments and we are um, recording your total body weight, when we're performing the assessments that utilize this two compartment model from your total body weight, that will mean that the predictive formulas for fat mass, they're utilizing up to 15, 25%, your body weight and fat-free mass will be 75 to 85% of your body weight. We can also look at the multi-compartment models where it can be subcategorized right into that adipose tissue, bone, organ mass from the brain, heart, to liver, kidneys, spleen, etc. And residual mass, that is the skin, the gut, uh, reproductive organs, cartilage, tendons, all the other re residual mass at the organ level. This picture I like a lot. These are the different models. Again, um, the, uh, the numbers, the percentages in this, uh, the infographics are for illustration purposes only, right? But as a general rule, when we're talking about different models, the more compartments that are measured, the smaller error there is in the body composition estimates, right? So for example, for the skin folds, and the in-body that use the two compartment model, fat mass is going to be that 15 to 25%, and fat-free mass is going to be 75 to 85%. If we perform the three compartment model, like the hydrostatic weighing, that's going to be subcategorized, right? To uh, divide it into more compartments, three compartments, fat mass, your body water is going to be 60%, and protein and minerals, about 20%, like uh, muscle and bone, right? And then we have other uh, compartment models as well. So big takeaway that I want you to know from the body composition models, two compartment to three compartment model, and from all the different tests that we're going to do, the skin folds, the in body, bod pod, I want you to consider the following. Your um, body weight for the day, right? The number that you see on the scale is just a reference to the your body weight from that day, right? Your total body weight is going to fluctuate a lot from within the day and within the week and, you know, further um, week after week. So don't stress over the number on the scale, pretty much. That number is just significant to that day um, because it's, it's going to fluctuate based on if you had breakfast that morning or not, if you had a lot of water that morning or not, if you, you know, went to the restroom or not, right? If you have a lot of still um, your, um, a, a lot of bolus on your digestive tract, right? You haven't gone to the restroom or not. All those things are going to uh, play a role into that number that you see on that scale when you measure your body weight that day, right? So I want you to consider that your daily and weekly body weight fluctuations due to water intake, food intake, if it was a low versus a high fiber diet or carbohydrate diet uh, supplementation too, 
and the menstrual cycle if you're a female. Okay, so all those things are going to play a role into not only your body weight, um, but also the uh, assessment itself of body fat percentage. Right, so don't give yourself a hard time. Um, we'll be able to compare accuracy of the results that you gather from the different tests that we're going to do, skin folds, in body, bod pod, etc., and uh, we'll be able to determine um, and get a range, right, on numbers for body fat percentage, and so we can get a bigger picture of what that body fat percentage is looking like for that day. All right, talking about densiometry, air displacement, plethysmography, the bod pod, estimates uh, body fat from whole body density using the ratio of body mass to body volume, right? So that pretty much means that when we are going into that bot pod, it's using um, a predictive value for your lung volume and is going to estimate your body fat percentage based on the ratio of your body mass, that is how much you weighed that day to your body volume, how much space your body occupies inside the bod pod. So it, it's estimating that body fat value. Densiometry is the standard for assessing body composition and dual the DEXA and other methods are becoming also a new standard, right? So bot pods, very accurate, also DEXA scan. So two methods for measuring body volume, what we can use, right? That's a hydrostatic weighing, you being submerged in water in a tank, right? Doing that assessment of um, whole body density and uh, the bot pod, breathismography. All right, for today's lab, we're going to be recording basic information of age, gender, ethnicity, height, and weight, which are important things that we're going to record and take into consideration because um, it's it's going to be important for the data that we input, for example, for the bot pod that uses predictive values for long volume. And so this information is gonna be important. And the body composition techniques that we're going to do, skin folds, circumferences, the in-body, the bod pod, and a couple of you will do hydrostatic weighing. For circumferences, all measurements are going to be performed with a flexible yet inelastic tape measure. The tape is going to be placed on the skin surface without compressing the subcontinuous adipose tissue. And you're going to take five measurements at each site and retest if measurements are not within five milliliters. Millimeters. <laughs> Rotate through the measurement sites or allow time for the skin to regain normal texture. So these are the procedures. Please take your time to go over them at your own pace uh, so you can so you know exactly what the uh, procedures are for the circumferences of the abdomen, the arm, the hips, calf, form, hips, thigh, mid thigh, and waist. For the skin flow measurements, measure on the right side of the body only with the subject standing upright. The caliper should be placed directly on the skin surface, one centimeter away from the thumb and the finger, perpendicular to the skin fold, and halfway between the crest and the base of the fold. That looks something like this right here on the pictures, right? Not right directly um, where your uh, fingers, you're doing that pinch of that skin, right? A little bit below that. Pinch should be maintained while reading the caliper. Right? Wait one or two seconds before reading the caliper, and then you can re um, remove the caliper and then remove your pinch from the skin. You're gonna take uh, multiple measures at each side and retest if duplicate measurements are not within the one to two meters. 
and rotate through measurement sites or allow time for the skin to regain no more texture and thickness. So these are the procedures. Please go through them in detail at your own pace and we will go over them in lab as well. And this is more further explanation about the skin fold procedures. All right, for the in-body, this, the one that we're going to be performing for lab is the whole body device. And it's really cool. It's um, brand new, just amazing. It's going to prompt you through all the steps. So you just need to provide a couple of basic information like your age, height, we'll measure your weight, and we'll prompt you through all the steps for performing the test. It's gonna be really cool. You're a good experience for all of you to do. And the bot pod, uh, I'll be helping you and assess in performing this test. So you'll provide me or the technician, your name, date of birth, gender, height. Um, for the test itself, you're going to need to wear as minimum clothing as possible. That would be a, for males a short and you'll be wearing the swim cap and for females sports bra and shorts right um compression uh, t-shirts and pants shorts are also acceptable with the swim cap on uh, and no jewelry or any other sort of um earrings necklaces watches and um, rings and so forth. Main reason why is because we don't want any extra volume inside of the bot pod and specifically that strapping air inside it because it's going to uh, not make the assessment as accurate. So minimizing as much as we can of that, any trapped air bubbles inside clothing and the hair. So that's why you'll be wearing a swim cap on. Also minimizing and as much as we can, any piercings and any jewelry that's metal uh, because the bar paw is going to detect it as a very dense object and it might play into your fat-free mass component, right? Dense, meaning might be, might detect it as muscle and make you appear leaner. So we want to minimize that as well. You're going to be sitting inside the chamber. You're not going to move. You're going to uh, sit there still uh, as still as you can while breathing as normal. And we'll be using the predicted lung volume. And we're going to be, I'm um, going to help perform the test, prompt you through all the steps. And that, that'll be it for the bot pod assessments. So this is your body composition data sheet. You'll be able to fill it out on your own. This is the circumferences, skin folds, or hydrocyte weighing data. You do not need to fill out this part, right? We'll be performing it with a couple of volunteers for lab. And lastly, for this lab, I wanna talk about some contraindications. For hydrostatic weighing, we want to stay away from performing this test if your client has any significant cardiovascular disease or respiratory compromise, if they have any um, areas that have been um, open, like open wounds in the skin, um, if or if they have a healing wound, rashes, or a skin condition, if there are any environmentally environmentally communicable communicable conditions like head lice, athlete's food, um, if they have incontinence of bladder or bowel, especially diarrhea, stool borne infections and infectious respiratory diseases like cold, the flu, tuberculosis. For the DEXA, there are also contraindications if there is a weight limitation of the scanning bed that's typically around 300 pounds. 
and the width of the scanning area that's usually around 60 centimeters. Furthermore, contraindications for bioelectrical impedance if your client has medical electronic implants such as a pacemaker or if they're an electronic life support system such as an artificial lung, you might want to stay away from performing bioelectrical impedance. And other precautions to consider are hydrophobia, the fear of water. If your client has hydrophobia, do not perform hydrostatic weighing, right? Conform the body composition test in a different way. Um, hypophobia, that's the fear of being touched or uncomfortable with contact. Right? If your client presents this, stay away from performing skin fold assessments. That might not be a good way to measure body composition. If there are any cognitive or neurological disorders leading to safety concerns, and if there's any disability, right, preventing the safe entry and exit from uh, the tank, for instance, in the hydrostatic way, or any um, any any precautions that we have to um, have when performing the test. We have to be able to be aware of those things. All right, for lab manual uh, this week, you're gonna be starting your skin fold template. That is the Excel file posted on your Canvas where you'll be able to, once you, call, once you perform the skin fold assessments and you record the data, you'll be able to use this template to um, fill out this information and obtain the density, percentage of body, percentage of um, body fat, fat mass to fat free mass components. Now using different equations, I'll be studying in lab as well. All right. Thank you for five for listening and happy studying. I'll see you soon.